what I'm going to do today, guys, is have a look at this uh, lovely BM235. And uh, yes, it's branded EEV blog. Reason being, because uh, Dave over at the EEV blog managed to get his name stuck on a, a, a half decent uh, Bryman 235 multimeter, which I think is absolutely bloody brilliant. Cheers, Dave. Um, I've been using this multimeter for quite a while now. I use it for work related stuff. And um, I'll have a quick rundown. These are the probes that you get with. And as you can see, they're actually quite good. They're um, high voltage probes. And if I can twist one round, I can show you that they're actually rated at one kilovolt, 10 amps. So that's, um, that's, that's pretty um, generous. Given the cost of this meter, it actually wasn't a terrible amount, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, definitely affordable, especially for someone like me. I think this was around about, don't quote me on this, I'm not sure what the current market price is, but I'm sure it was about 120 UK pounds, I think. Again, don't quote me, I, I, I'm not 100% sure. But... I thought we'd have a look because I, I do really like this meter. I mean, I, 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 again, I use it a lot at work and stuff and for hobby stuff as well. Um, I would say you've got all your category ratings. Where are we? Oh, it's under the leads. Let's move those out of the way for the moment. Though. So if you can have a look here, we've got 300 volt cat whatever that is 600 volt cat whatever that is and one kilovolt cat whatever that is cat 2 cat 3 and cat 4 obviously um, as you can see the sockets here we've got what they your intended uses of the meter so obviously gives you a nice little uh, indication as to what plugs to actually stick them in when you're whenever you're working on certain things so that's ohms voltage capacitance diode check and temperature that red one there the common is the common uh, connector, or almost always known as ground, if you if you suppose, if you like. Um, milliamps and microamps, so this will be your current testing. Your amps, which will obviously be your current testing. Um, this, what this meter does have, which I just remembered, is a really nifty little feature, which I think a lot of people would appreciate. And I'll show you what that is. If I'm now going to do some voltage testing, okay, and I've got my plugs in the right socket, all's good and dandy. But if, for example, you are testing amps at some point, and you forget to change your leads over, which I've done many times before now, and potentially could uh, give you a nice big fat headache, and you go to your volts mode, Guess what happens? Insert error. Basically means that you've got your, check your jacks because you've got your jacks in the wrong positions. So that's a very good indicator. I love that feature a lot. I mean, I've had some other multimeters before and they don't do that. And if you're, say for example, testing amps or current for a given circuit, uh, and or you're checking voltages and you've got it in current mode, it's a direct short. And that will blur the arse out of whatever it is you're testing. So it's not a good idea. So that is a very good feature. Um, what else do I use this for? I primarily use this for uh, the... We stick to voltage, especially AC voltage. And you've got EF. And what that will do as a bar graph indicator as to um, if you're sort of you know playing with electric uh, mains electricity and you want to double check that something is actually off while you're working on it say change your plug socket a, a, a plug um, a light fitting whichever this will actually give it kind of like a finding pipes in the wall you know those meters you get this is the same for but for electronics so for example if I I've got nothing else plugged in actually I've got a light bulb to the left here so if you're here now I'm not near any mains voltages but if I go next to this light bulb, it starts screaming at you. So you know it's like an audio and visual indication that you're near something that's potentially live. Uh, I use that quite a lot and I think that is a very handy 
um, thing to have on a multimeter that you use regular. Um, what else can I say about this meter? I don't do much current testing with this, so I can't give you any idea on how that performs. I'm sure it's pretty accurate. The, I'll try and get a data sheet down below somewhere if you wanted to have a look. Um, obviously continuity. This is always a test that everybody does with their meters, I'm sure. And uh, it's how quick your um, your probes respond to when you're checking continuities. So very quick scratch test. Now that is a, a really big thing nowadays. Um, the quicker that responds, it's the quicker you are at finding a maybe a, you're tracing a, a trace on a circuit board or a dead short somewhere on a circuit board. That is always a really good, um, quick, responsive audio indication. So it's uh, quite accurate and quite nippy. So it saves you time. If you've got one of those dodgy multimeters, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to do your, your thing, and it doesn't always connect as quickly as that. So you end up with, say, you're doing that and nothing happens. It's not as quick. And you're trying to find a dead short on a board. You'd be there for hours. So that, is, again, is another handy feature. Temperature I've not really used. Again, amps and current testing I don't really use. Um, the resistance and all that stuff. Again, I'll put the data sheet down below somewhere just to give you the accuracy of all the resistance measurements and all the voltage measurements and all, the, all that kind of, you know, sort of detailed stuff if you want to have a look at. But I'm just going to now have a look at... Well, I may take it apart. I'm not sure. I might do. But we'll take the jacket off because there's a jacket around here. So we'll take that off and actually have a look at the actual body itself um, in this actual multimeter. And let's have a look and see what it's like. Right, guys, let's have a look in uh, taking this baby apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whack it on manual focus first. I'll say manual focus. Just turn the servo A off, A, F off <coughs> so that we don't keep getting that really annoying hunting thing that the cameras do see now it's not doing it see that i'm out of focus but because um so yeah this is the let me just focus down on that point there perfect all right so this is the i say it's the blue jacket that it comes with i suppose it's just a rubber baby bunker or bumper as dave at ev blog says I can't remember how he actually says it. How does he say it? Rubber, rubber, blubber, blubber, baby bunk, something, I don't know. Check out his videos, I'm sure uh, you'll find him saying it at some point. So let me take this out. This is quite a tight fit, which is, <clears throat> I suppose is good. So that's just the jacket there. Let me, oh, why does it keep going out of focus? There we go. So it's just a blue silicon, I suppose. It's, uh, it's quite good for any shock absorption if you do decide to drop it, which I've dropped this quite a few times, I must admit. So it does come in handy if you're a bit clumsy like me. And uh, let's get a little bit of focus on there. Kill wall. So this is the actual meter itself without the uh, rubber bumper, baby bunker, whatever the bumper, whatever it is. It's, I can't even say that. It's like a tongue twister. I suppose you have to be Australian to do it. <laughs> I'm not. Um, so yeah, this is the actual meter. Shall I take it apart? Well, first off, let's have a look at where the batteries go and what batteries this thing takes. So let's grab a screwdriver from my bench up the top. So let's undo the screw. So it's a bit dark. There we go. Angle it just a little bit. I think it's, uh, it stays in the stays in the jacket so you're not going to lose the screw so that comes off like so and we, all it takes is two AAA batteries which are I must admit they are quite difficult to get out it's quite a, a closed in space so let's uh, do that one and I think with this one like that. well I haven't got nimble fingers so yeah um, straight away, you can see there's some big ass HRC 
fuses there and there. Obviously, they're for the different mil uh, current ratings. So I think that's the lower milliamp and that's the higher milliamp ratings. Just in case something goes wrong, and it, it, you know, you're not going to blow up your multimeter, essentially. Um, let's have a look. Actually, what does that say? That says 1,000 volt. I'm not sure the amp rating. What does that say? I, uh, let me see if I can see it on the screen. Let me zoom in. Focus. I can just... No, it's just a number. I thought it was actually a current rating on there, but it's not. So yeah, so just a battery compartment. I suppose it's a bit of a pain in the arse every time you want to change the batteries, you've got to undo the thing, but it's only one screw, so who's complaining? Not me. And I say this retails, I'm sure, at about 100 or 120 pounds delivered. I think I got this from Amazon. So it wasn't from Dave from the EV blog directly. Um, but it was available in uh, other shops and other online stores and stuff. So easy access. There's quite a few of them to buy. You still can get them. There is another one at 121 GW that uh, David Evie blog has actually um, been involved in actually designing the multimeter with um, who was it with? It wasn't Bryman. It was who was it? Some other multimeter company, big multimeter company. Can't remember the name of who it was now. But um, yeah, he sort of got involved with that, and they allowed him to uh, go into the designing process. So that was a uh, pretty cool. So yeah, as we can see, let's have a look. It's a two board solution. Obviously you've got the, the second board here, which just has the uh, mobs and all the protection and all that sort of stuff, minus the fuses on there. So we've got, this is a, a resistor. Is that a resistor network or is that, a, I don't know what that is. That's a, what's it labeled as? Oh, I can't see it, it's underneath. So this is the chipset for the actual multimeter itself. Again, it'll probably be a, a design that was currently used in a, the manufacture of this multimeter from the company that Dave was uh, had a hand in dealing with. Um, I'm not going to pretend to know how this all works because I haven't got Scooby-Doo. I just thought we'd have a look just to see if there's anything of interest really. So yeah, so that's the chipset for the multimeter. You've got the buzzer there obviously for your continuity or your insert error on your plugs when you plug them in the wrong way. Um, some other little chippies here, I don't know what they do. Quite a few diodes and stuff. There is, as you can see on the underside, let me see if I can get round. Let me turn that zoom on and keep it on for the moment, time being. I'm not going to take this off because I had trouble with this before and as you can see I've had to jimmy some other wires on there because I kind of broke it. So that is quite difficult to take off, it's not really meant to be serviced, it's not really meant to be taken off. If you don't know what you're doing don't bother. That there is a current shunt. Uh, what else do we have? And I say on the underside here is just some, so that blue thing there, that's a MOV, metal oxide varista. And that there is an NTC, I think it's a thermal resistor, a thermal cutout resistor. Just um, a little bit of added protection for uh, whatever it is you're plugging in, just in case there's a, a human error or a pebcac, as uh, Dave likes to call it. So yeah, I'm not going to go too much into detail, I'm not going to go any further than that really, because um, there's no point me in explaining stuff that I don't really know much about. So, But I thought I'd just show you uh, exactly what's inside one of these tings. And I say this is actually a really good model, a really good uh, make, a Bryman if you don't know. They're in the uh, top class of multimedia, uh, multimedia, no, top class of uh, multimeter um, sort of uh, market, shall we say. So uh, you can trust stuff that they make because they're built to a, um, a higher standard even if you're not spending too much money on them i mean multimeters you can spend up to you know up to a grand on for say like a fluke multimeter or something like that but for a hundred pounds and you're doing sort of general um maybe mains electrics and servicing or if you're doing low voltage stuff this is absolutely perfect it's, you don't need any more really um, has its basics funct basic functions, it has some 
advanced functions, so it kind of caters a lot of things, really. But um, if you're thinking about getting one, you're not too sure, I would personally recommend definitely getting one, even as your first multimeter. It's something to you can have a play about with. Um, it has obviously quite a bit of safety uh, functions, has a lot of safety circuitry and stuff like that, so you are somewhat safe when using it. And so it has plenty of errors and indications as to, um, you know, sort of any problems you may come across, like any sort of, you know, user error problems. So it's quite safe on that experience. So if you're a new user, there are certain functions on here that will help you and guide you along and, uh, you know, double check where you're plugging your multimeter, uh, sorry, your multimeter leads into, you know, for one. Very good. Very, very good. I would recommend buying one, definitely, 100%. I like it, and I'm looking to actually get the 121 GW that uh, Dave from EUV Blog made, along with whoever that partner was, a multimeter, multimeter brand, which I seem to forget the name of. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, it's quite sturdy. I mean, it's, it's rock bloody solid. And I said, when you've got your bumper on it as well, makes it a very good choice for you know advanced users and or sort of new users you know really it's kind of caters for all which uh it's got a tilting bail there tilting stand which is all right i mean i don't tilt it up anyway i just use it while it's in my hand generally a lot of the time but yeah that's the bm235 branded eev blog made by bryman definitely would recommend Thank you very much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video, Tube Users.